Bubbly Steve is available for pre-order at shopclownfish.com. That's shopclownfish.com. You've got less than a month to pre-order this 15-inch plushie. Check them out. Well, that was quick. That was very quick. Uh, yeah, Snake Eyes is getting dumped onto digital tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna be able to buy Snake Eyes, not that you'd want to, but you're gonna be able to buy Snake Eyes on digital just like, what, two weeks after it was in the theaters? They gotta make their money somehow. It wasn't uh, from theatrical release. Good luck with that. So we're gonna talk about that. It's not getting a 45 day window. Probably not. Uh, we're gonna talk about that before we get into it any further. This is Neon, I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, we're gonna talk about Snake Eyes. The movie called Snake Eyes, it doesn't actually have Snake Eyes in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is and, a trend, and, right? And the character is actually an asshole, apparently. Apparently he's an asshole. Haven't seen it yet. I've heard mixed reviews, but uh, it failed spectacularly at the box office. Can't imagine why when you take a character who is always masked and never talks and you have him with his damn mask off talking the whole movie. He wasn't supposed to be a good looking dude. That's the point. That is why he has a mask. Right. So Henry Golding, there's, oh, look at my face. I'm hot. I'm Henry Golding. Well, that's not. He said, hot Henry. He said it just like that. So, um, but that wasn't the point of Snake Eyes. All right. So we're going to talk about it before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're 231,000 subs. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about pop culture, talk about comics, talk about uh, the 80s and the desecration of 80s franchises. And G.I. Joe, they just can't get it right. Well, yeah, G.I. Joe's problematic. It is. I, I, I honestly think that's why we're in seeing G.I. Joe done like it. Because if you actually wanted to make a good G.I. Joe movie, like look at the first G.I. Joe movie. They made it an international you're probably for the international box office. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a real American hero. They made it uh, an international group, kind of like the UN with laser guns. Pretty much. And then we had barely had Cobra Commander in it, just like this movie barely had Snake Eyes. You had, you had uh, Cobra Commander's origin was all changed, just like Snake Eyes. Cobra, Cobra Commander with a hood is not problematic. And he's problematic. Because so. like, you know that you know anybody who wears a hood, even the other cultures do, that honestly, obviously makes it a KKK reference. Yeah, the only thing I liked in the first G.I. Joe movie is I actually like Christopher Eccleston as Destro. But well, he, I like Christopher Eccleston in general. But he needed to have the mask on for more than 30 seconds. Well, that's just they kept doing that because it was one cheaper and so these actors got their face time. And that's the thing. When you're trying when you're trying to do something that was like well-known and established and there's a certain look to it, you have to find a place where it's not about the actors and their face time. It's more about being true to the characters. And they keep not doing that. Like, we even though Mandalorian, you're going to see him with his mask off probably more and more and more because Pedro Pascal wants to make sure you know he's Pedro Pascal. And it's like, but isn't the characters in the movie more important than your own ego? No. And yeah, no. No. And then, and then the other thing I want to point, point out, they said about being problematic. When the show was out back in the day, it was very diverse. The G.I. Joe team looks like the damn village people with machine guns. I mean, they were it was they were diverse as heck back then. And now they're like, well, finally we fixed it. We've made it more diverse for the show that always was diverse. Yeah, now it's interesting because you know, Snake Eyes backstory was created by Larry Hama. Who's uh, now backpedaled. Who's backpedaled, but I think he's trying to he was trying to support the movie because there probably is a paycheck involved. I'm sure it's his character. You know, uh, so they had to get him. He had to say nice things about it. But this movie, as I understand it, it has nothing to do with Snake Eyes from the comics or Snake Eyes from definitely not the cartoon show. Uh, yeah, it's Henry Golding doing Kung Fu. Right, because basically. don't you know, it was very racist to have a non-Asian person be a martial arts master because there's nothing like stereotyping yourself worse than anybody else would stereotype you. So here we go. They're dumping it onto digital. And then we're going to talk about the box office. It's okay. This let's is why do it's, that. This is why it's being dumped on the digital. Hot damn, let's go. Uh, CBR.com, Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe Origins gets an early, <laughs> an early streaming release. Please, for the love of God, can we make some money on this movie? That's basically what it is. I mean, we're talking like, it's not like, oh, it was out two months ago and it's coming like a month early. No, no, no. It was like, what, released like two weeks ago? Yep. Uh, Paramount sets an early digital release date for Snake Eyes while also confirming this fall's physical home release. Good luck with that. Uh, that's going to be a Black Friday special. Mm -hmm. $5 <laughs> sure Blu-rays. 
Uh, Paramount confirmed the home release date for Snake Eyes Origin. It will arrive on digital platforms for both purchase and premium video on demand Tuesday, August 17th, tomorrow. Like, is this a snap decision? What, like, this weekend? It has like, been. Like, we didn't get anywhere near our box office numbers. Quick. Shit, just dump it on digital tomorrow, guys. To VOD. This this article just came out like a half an hour ago. I had heard nothing about the... the I mean, I could have missed it because I don't really give a shit. I happened to see it and I sent it your way. But I'm like, this sounds to me like they panicked after this weekend. They're like, we are making zero dollars on this movie. Dump it on digital. Gotta make some money. But but there, wait, there's more. If you want the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray standard Blu-ray or DVD, you can get that on October 19th, including Why? the Steelbook. Who wants the Steelbook of this thing? Somebody will because they will have masked Snake Eyes on the cover and it'll look nice. And if you're a G.I. Joe collector, it'll be like, oh, look, it looks like Snake Eyes. July 23rd. So we're talking like three weeks ago. Yeah. It was three weeks. I thought it was two, but it's about three. Three weeks. This is ridiculous. That's not 45 days, guys. No. They, I mean, this is this is crazy. Now, this isn't unprecedented during these unprecedented times. <laughs> now, because, pre now completely precedented. It's not completely precedented at this point. Right. But if if the movie was actually making bank in the theater, it would not be dumped onto digital this quickly. Well, what worries me is this one comment um, that is on here. They said that while G.I. Joe purists might not be able to overcome the traditionally silent mass protagonist, I like my men masked and quiet. <laughs> the gag hurts me. <laughs> uh, traditionally silent mass protagonist being neither silent nor masked for the bulk of the film. The film unapologetically comes out swinging. So let me get this straight. We're going to make a movie about a character who wears a mask and doesn't talk, but we're going to take the mask off and make him talk throughout the whole movie. This is almost like if somebody said, hey, let's do a new He-Man show, but let's kill He-Man off and have it right. be about all these other characters we don't care right. about. Right, you know, and, and then the purists says this, those man babies are going to get so purists expected mad. Snake Eyes in the Snake Eyes movie. <laughs> How very dare they, those assholes, those neck beard gatekeeping assholes expected an accurate representation of Snake Eyes current year? How dare they? I love this. Financially, Snake Eyes grossed only $35.2 million on an estimated $88 to $110 million oh. budget. That is why it is coming out to POV tomorrow. Ooh. Ooh. Like even Scarlet looks nonplussed. Uh, although I do think they did a good job with her her costume. Yeah, they got that right. Actually, is is more uh, uh, toy and comic book accurate than than the leather jumpsuits they were oh, all wearing. Oh, it's okay for her. I get her accurate, yeah. but then they make him look like you know Henry Golding has to have his face out all the time because I'm Henry Golding and I'm hot. Yeah. So I don't think there are going to be any more GI Joe movies for a while. They they keep talking about how uh, they were going to use this to to kickstart a, a reboot of GI Joe. It's not hard. You've got decades of source material. All you have to do is read the fucking source material and just do that, but in live action. Right, and get it right. But what they're going to do, the, they're talking, and maybe this will cancel it. They were going to do a G.I. Joe series on Amazon featuring Lady J. I heard that, yeah. That's not what people want. Mm -mm. It's not hard. They like Scarlet better anyway. You get Scarlet, you get proper Snake Eyes, you get Roadblock, you get Duke. You do it right. Pew pew laser guns and shit. Well, maybe not laser guns. We'll Flint go with and Lady J were the were the B. They were the B team. team. They were sorry if you like Foot and Lady J. You're allowed to like them. Just no, the B team. They were the B team. You get the you get the A team. Well, not the actual. Well, you want when you want someone to kick ass, you bring in a ginger. I'm sorry. It's this way it is. Yeah, Flint. Flint I want she had timber. Not. Uh, yeah, well, they're talking, you know, if they make a sequel, they'll bring Timber in. Timber will start out as a cat throughout most of the movie, and then eventually will transition to a dog. I don't think that'll happen. For the last 30 seconds of the movie. I don't know. I just, I mean, look, you can even use Henry Golding as your snake eyes. But just, like, you know, have something tragically happen at the beginning where he can't talk and his face is scarred up, and then put him in his costume the whole rest of the movie. So that's, that's what you do. If you're the director of this movie... And Henry Golding is standing around drinking coffee at the little their little refreshment bar they have on set. And he's talking, and he's talking some more. You walk up to Henry Golding. This is how you give him direction. Henry, could you put this bag on your head and shut the fuck up? Yes. Now get back out there and do some kung fu. That's all you have to do. Mm-hmm. 
put the bag on your head and shut the fuck up. Actually, for as an actor, this would probably be harder because you don't have lines. You have to act it out all like with your body and with your movements. That would be like a much harder job. So I would think that, you know, not having lines and having to be a convincing snake eyes would give you more acting props and give you more credit than having lines. Well, Ray face. Park did it. I know. Ray Park did a damn good job. Now, I didn't like the kissy lips on the original Snake Eyes costume uh, in the first movie, but the second movie costume was pretty okay. But yeah, Ray Park could do it. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ray Park does all his own stunts and everything, too. Right. So I'm just saying, but you know, it didn't do well for not whatever well. reason. And now to make up more money, because it's like the search for more money, they're hurrying up and dropping it like three weeks later on VOD. But why would you think it's, I mean, just, just listen to this pitch. Hey. We're going to make a G.I. Joe movie about Snake Eyes. Uh, he's he's going to talk throughout the entire movie. We're going to drastically... Snake Eyes. Yes, Snake Eyes. Snake he suddenly eyes. talks. He suddenly talks. He's going to talk throughout the whole movie. And uh, we got a really good-looking dude who's really hot right now to play him at Henry Golding. Yeah, Crazy Rich. And he's, and he's Asian. Cra well, Snake Eyes wasn't Asian. Well, he is now. No, as I'm saying. He's, <laughs> that's why I'm saying. They're like, because you know, only Asians can do Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Uh, otherwise, you're being racist. You know, only Asians can do Kung Fu. That's just the way it is. But, you know, anytime somebody Cultural puts appropriation. crazy rich Asians in the same sentence as Snake Eyes G.I. Joe movie. No. <laughs> just just no. This would be like, no. I, how hard is it to say no? Just say well, no. The dude it's was bad hired idea. from his face to, for his face to begin with because he didn't even know how to do the the, the 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 martial arts. They had to teach him how to do it, which is fine. A lot of actors, you know, don't know how to do martial arts and they have to be taught. No big deal. Um, but you know, it wasn't like they were hiring him because they, they, they knew Snake Eyes would be very martial arts intensive and that he'd be able to pull it off as they're hiring him. No, no. They hired him because of his face and because he was Asian. And at the time, anybody who got hired in movies about Asians was pretty much from the cast of Crazy Rich Asians or Fresh Off the Boat. So Aquafina is going to play Lady J. No, but she's in, she's in Shang-Chi. <laughs> I'm just like... Okay, so you put the bag on Henry Golding's head, you tell him to shut the fuck up, and you have him go get coffee while you bring Ray Park in... To do all the action scenes. I mean, maybe he did a good job from my understanding. Okay. I haven't seen it. But he, I mean, so it, I'll give him props for that. He learned how to do all this stuff. I will give so, him props you know, for that. Anybody who can do that, I will give credit to. Because I can't do that. And it's hard. It's hard. And I would give him complete props for that. I am going to go on record as saying if he did, he did a lot of himself. And he learned how to do it himself, um, as from my understanding. And if that's the case, then he deserves all the credit for that. I just don't understand there, there's no, like Hollywood, this is not hard. All you got to do is give people what they expect. You don't sell them a product, say, hey, this is that thing you remember from when you were a kid, except we, cha we changed everything about it. Oh my God, you didn't like it. We fucking hate That's you. That's because, yeah, you're we a terrible you. person. I'm interested looking at this stuff here, though. They said that they think it'll generate, it'll need to generate approximately 160 million <laughs> to, to 135 million globally. <laughs> To break even and oh justify its eighty-eight million dollar budget. Okay, wait, just wait. So this is like that was three, three weeks ago, and they said um, it generated a meager four million from thirty-seven overseas markets. Four million was the international. Oh my god, that's horrible. However, that represents twenty-nine percent of its international footprint. So the first two entries of the of you know the, the GI Joe movies made three hundred and twenty million. So they said that yeah, the GI Joe Rise of Cobra. Um, got equally bad reviews and G.I. Joe Retaliation, they, but they opened to 54 million and 40 million. This didn't even open to that. No, and they had the rock in the second one, you know? I mean, I mean the second one wasn't necessary, but... You, the, it's not hard to get G.I. Joe right. I know. It's not it's hard to not get a lot of this stuff right. How hard is it to get Masters of the Universe right? I mean... Just put you know, He-Man in it. And then make Tila like <laughs> make Tila. Like Tila. Even Tila can be the main characters. But just like, keep Tila Tila. That's all you had to do. So what they're going to do... So they literally keep fucking up G.I. Joe. They can't get G.I. Joe right in live action. They keep fucking up the 80s shows, just in general. Yeah, and, and what they're going to do then is they're going to be like, well, I guess this is a dead franchise. I don't know what happened. Oh, you All you had to do was make the comic books into live action. Right. It's not hard. Put the mask on the dude. Don't have him talk. I mean... I, I, I don't understand... 
this is the same, this is Paramount, this is Paramount that did the Gem movie. Let's do Gem, but let's not make it anything like Gem. Yeah, they, they oh don't God, understand why this stuff keeps failing. And then it's because all those man babies out there, their, you know, istophobic behaviors and ideas didn't come because they don't like him because he's Asian. It's like, that has nothing to do with it. I, I just, I, I, yeah. Very little to do with it. We're never going to get a good G.I. Joe live action movie. The only way that we could even pull off G.I. Joe because it is such a product of its time is to set it in the 80s. Now, that's actually good because right now, like, 80s nostalgia is big, but it's G.I. Joe was a very pro-military, Reagan-era, you know, thing and it's just it's problematic they keep taking these shows that are products of their time and trying to put them into current times and they don't work no you could and if you don't like it it's not because maybe it's a dumbass decision that you should make something new it's because you're a horrible person five shitty transformers movies mm -hmm. it took them five tries getting it wrong every time until they came up with bumblebee which is really just all what people wanted. Like, oh my God, look, the Transformers look like themselves and it takes place in the 1980s. Yeah, look, and they used the girl as a lead. People didn't care. They didn't care. Should have been Carly. But they made her Charlie. Yeah, should have been. Yeah, I know. Because they already used Carly and they I made know. her a model, which wasn't. That didn't make any sense. Anyway. anyway yeah, you know, the, the, you know the, real, the real her would have been like, why the hell am I flipping model? Yeah. She would have hated that. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, but this is the same Paramount that actually listened on Sonic the Hedgehog. So it depends on who's working on the movie. Get some people to actually give a shit about G.I. Joe to work on the G.I. Joe movie. Maybe that's, you know, that's not That's hard. too hard. It's not hard. Gonna wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.